Hello folks, Junkie Rock 13 here, bringing you another review, and this one is long overdue. I've had this device for quite a long time, and I'm just getting around to doing a review on it. This is the DID. It is a Genesis Atomizer sold by evape, e-vape.gr, uh, Greece. Um, this device is very easy to obtain. There's no lists. Uh, you can go right to the site and buy it, which is very one of the first Genesis device, if not the first Genesis device that was so e easy obtainable. And um, many people own the Dead. Many people love the Dead. And I decided to do a review on it. This is the standard size, not the short. It's the standard size. Um, now they have the mini, the short, and the standard. This actually has a tube, uh, a, like a plastic tube with from a uh, Smoke Tech DCT tank. I'm going to get into that. We're going to take a closer look at it, and then I'm going to talk about it, show you what I think about it, and that's the did. Take a look. Okay, folks, so here is the did, totally disassembled, and um, this is sort of how it's going to be coming from the vendor, but I did, this has been used for quite a while, so the O-rings are on, but the O-rings will not be assembled. You will have to assemble the O-rings and put them onto the grooves, and let me show you what the o-rings look like disassembled. I have them in a bag here. They give you extra set of o-rings. I think I got an extra set plus an extra one. These are the ones, the large o-rings that will be going on the one for the top piece in the groove in there, one for the bottom piece in the groove in there, and then we have two little O-rings and those O-rings will be going on the center post. One on each side. If you can see that one there and one there. Okay. So I'm going to take these and push these off to the side and I'm just going to explain the pieces just a little bit. Alright. So this is the bottom piece of the did. It's got the 510 connection right there. Very nice threading. And there's some knurled, um, kind of used as a hand grip to tighten it and loosening it. Then on the inside there's the o-ring and right here you'll notice that for the center post it's got a little groove that this positive center post will be fitting into and the o-ring will be going flush into that little groove. Alright, and the top piece is sort of the same way with the little center groove, uh, the center post in there, and you'll notice down the center there's like a Delrin pl plastic, or Delrin, Teflon, I'm not sure of the material, but that is the center right there, which the center post is going to be coming up through. Now you have three holes in the top place, the top piece. You have one for a fill hole, which is all the way over here. And then you have one right here, which is going to be your negative connection. And this is your wick hole. And the center is obviously your positive connection. I'm going to show you how to put this all together. I just wanted to show you how it looks disassembled. This is your top piece. Nice, very nice stainless steel your air hole. Some people think it's tight. Some people think it's too airy. Um, I haven't modded this air hole yet. I think I am going to open it up a little bit. But it's a 510 connection. You can actually hear the ice cream truck driving by. Right now. <laughs> but here's your top piece. Nice little slant top. 
and then your tank piece which is stainless steel okay now they do sell glass pieces a little fuzz on it glass pieces uh, clear glass and they have plastic ones what I have found for me is everybody is familiar with the smoke tech DCT tank okay now if you look at this tank it's and look at this plastic piece now it's a different size lengthwise but it is the same diameter okay being that it's the same diameter tube you can use this and what I have done was taken one and cut it down to the same size okay so I have been using the plastic smoke tech DCT tubing which is I believe is a polycarbonate and I've been using that because I like don't get me wrong I love the stainless steel tube but I also like to see my juice levels and this is what I'm gonna be setting up the did with today okay so I'm gonna take the bottom connector piece and how I started off with is just take the center post with the two o-rings and just screw it into them threads screw it down all the way nice and tight okay now what I'm going to do is what I'm actually gonna do is take the, the um, tubing and before I do that I'm gonna grab a little juice because the o-rings are very tight so I'm just gonna put like a just a drop rub it around there and while I'm at it I'll just put a little bit on the top piece here okay so we're gonna put that right on there slides on nice nice and easy and with this piece it's kind of you have to put on and screw on at the same time to put that piece on so it's a little difficult so you have to screw it on pretty tight okay make sure it's down all the way so we don't get no leaking okay there we go so that is what the did is going to look like with the plastic okay the smoke tech DCT tubing so you can take your center post now this is the brass post now the newer ones are being sold with stainless steel posts and stainless steel nuts this one is one of the original ones that were being sold the first week that they were being sold it was uh, they sold it with the brass now you're gonna just take it from the bottom and insert it in all the way up take one of these little um, brass thumb screws thumb nuts thumb nuts I like that and tighten it all the way down now make sure it's tightened all the way and you'll be fine now with the last two if you notice, I hope you're going to be able to see this on this camera. Let me put this off to the side. Oops, nice. Thank God it wasn't glass. Alright, you're not going to be able to see that, I don't think. Okay, do you see how that little screw has like a little groove on that side? But on the other side, it don't. So some people have been saying on the forums that these two sides together right here if you put them together they're more flat and they're more flush and they have a better connection so I've tried it I don't think I've noticed any difference but we'll put it that way so what I'm going to do is take the one with that little groove pointing down and just start it and then put the flat side down towards the other one 
and these don't have to be tightened as of yet. So we're going to take the negative post and we're going to put it in here. It's just a little Allen screw. Look at that. I scratched my fingers from tightening that up. Okay. Now you do get an Allen wrench with this. Because I have so many Allen keys, I'm not even sure if this is the correct one. It does fit. I'm, I'm not sure if this is the one that came with it. But it is the right size. And I'll leave that loose because I'm going to have to put the wire in there. And then this one, we can leave that out for now because that's going to be your fill screw. And then you can just take the top and put it on there. You have a little paper paper towel dust in there. But that's what the did looks like fully assembled. I'm going to take this apart and I'm going to put that all off to the side and now I'm going to make a wick real quick. Okay folks, so I have a piece of, let me just make exactly sure what the piece I have for the stainless steel mesh. It is a little over 40 millimeters by a little under 35. It's usually 35 by 40. So what I like to do is, if you've seen my other videos, I like to take just a little hair, probably like a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch, and just fold it over flat. And then just crease it up. Now the reason why I do this is because when you're wrapping your coil around the wick, sometimes you'll notice this little fray of stainless steel hanging off. Now on these edges there might be little pieces hanging off and if it's touching the wick or the coil it will short out. So I just make it a nice straight flat playing edge on the outside edge that's going to be on the wick. So I'm going to take my paper clip that I always use and this is how I start to roll it. I fold it over halfway and then just roll it downward all the way until the paper clip comes out and it just usually starts bending right up. And roll it completely like a cigarette. Then I'm going to take the trusty toothpick, put it right in there, and wrap it as tight as I can get it around this toothpick. Now I like to start in the center and this may mean nothing to people when they're rolling their wicks, but I like to start in the center and roll outwards. And the wick for the did seems to be perfect with the size of the toothpick. So Now I like to get it nice and tight around the center of the tooth because the diameter of the center of the toothpick seems to be perfect. And the reason why I'm putting so much pressure on this is because it takes that outside edge and it makes it nice and flat. Okay. So there's the rolled wick. I'm just going to take the dip and make sure it fits in there nice. Okay, it's a little loose, a little too loose for what I like. So what I'm going to do is put the toothpick back in there. Okay. Now instead of tightening it up, I'm just going to loosen it up a little bit. If I'm going the right way here. But I can't even tell which way I'm going. Okay. Okay, that would be loosening right now. Now I just start rolling the other way. Not much. And you could probably just do this right here in your fingers like this. Let me see if it fits a little bit better. Still a hair loose, but that's gonna be fine. 
okay so now I'm gonna take my torch now this is propane um, I usually use I have used um, butane but for this video I have no butane right now so I'm gonna use my propane torch I have used propane in my last videos I'm just gonna show you how to do it real quick bring in a cup of water okay and you'll notice that I'm getting the wick nice and red what I like to do is just do this process three times heat quench in the water dry it out with the paper towel and I'll do it with the other side Hear the wind blowing in the background. Very beautiful day today. Okay, so that's nice and red. Heat, quench. Now I'm going to stop the bit video for one second because I'm going to do this process three times and then I'll show you the next step. All right, so I now am done with the process of heating and quenching with the torch in the water. Now that's what the wick looks like nice and black nice layer of carbon layer over the stainless steel what I like to do is just take some juice whatever you were using PJVG and just burn a layer on there Make sure you don't burn your fingers when you're doing this. I've done it a hundred times of burning my fingers. Okay. It also gets very hot. Put a little on this side. Now this process I'm going to do three times also. Using that ugly brown lighter when I have my nice little tie dye lighter. Such a beautiful fall day today. Okay, I'll do this side one more time. This is just to put an extra little layer of something in between the stainless steel and the wick. That seems like it's going to be fine. Now, what I'm going to do is take the did and make sure it fits in there nicely very good take this put this out to the side okay now I'm gonna grab my device which I'm using the GGTB put this right here and I'm going to grab I had to go over to the other side of the room and grab my Cantal. I just have some 32 gauge Cantal grade A, it's AWG A1 grade. I believe that's how you call it. I'll take it and just snip off a nice little piece here. Now this piece that I cut off is probably going to be a lot longer than I need, but let me set that off to the side and show you what I'm going to do with this. Now what I like to do is just take my fingernail and run it down so it's nice and smooth so I don't have no kinks or bends. It's not going to be perfect because 
it just sometimes they get bent up but what I like to do is just take a lighter now this process doesn't have to be done it's just something that I like to do some people don't like doing it some people are against it but I choose to do it I've actually heard that by doing this you're removing something from the cantho my theory behind that is is when you dry burn a Genesis device you get this pretty red and hot anyhow right so I think we're just doing the same thing so when you do that it just seems to stiffen up and it, it's better to work with for me so I'm gonna take the dead I hope you're able to see this very well because this is the process that I want you to see good I like to put a bend in it right there now I take it just like this pull the ends over make sure they're through nice and I bring it right over to where the hole is if you can see that I hope you can see that. Okay, you see where this this piece is? It's going right through the center of the hole of the wick hole. Let me just tighten up this so you can so I can move it around. Maybe you can get a better shot of that. I know my hand is really up close. I'm gonna move this camera out a little bit. Okay. Take this negative piece and move it out to the side. So if you notice right there, the hole, the canthal is going right through the hole, the center of the hole. Now the reason why I do that is because I figure when I wrap, I wrap in a counterclockwise way, and this gives it the most direct route in contact with the um the wick so I'm going to take my wick and insert it into the hole all right now what I like to do is spin the device to wrap around the wick there's one I'll push it down in there there's one, now we're working on two. Always keeping the tension nice, not tight. Okay, so now I'm just gonna hold that there. Bring up that screw right up to the top of the center post. And I start to bring it all the way around and then work it back into between them them nuts so when I do that I pull it back over towards the wick and just tighten this up make sure the bottom one is pulled up just as well you want these as high well in my opinion I like having them high up as possible. A lot of people push them right down towards the middle, but that's how I like to have it. So I, I leave the ends on until I look at this, until I see if this is going to be okay. So let me just see right here, space it out correctly with my toothpick. Now I like to use the toothpick because a lot of people use like the syringe I feel this is gonna be a little bit red right there because I see a little space in there now I like when it's right up against that brass I like just pulling it away just a little bit so it's not gonna short out alright now before I put any juice on it, I'm going to dry 
fire this just to see if I have some major shorts and you can see the red spots right there let me see again okay let me move this back around now this is the interesting part that a lot of people have issues with Oh, my son is in the other room watching a movie and it just doesn't work for him to be quiet that long. Let's just try that. Oh, we still have a short right there. What I'm going to do is actually cut this wick too before we go any further. Right flush with the top of them bolts. Now that I cut that, it's nice and flush. Make sure this is still tight. Okay, let's see what we got again. It doesn't look too bad. It's just a little red right down in here. Kind of hard doing this under the camera. You don't get to see it good. I don't like the way that looks. So what I'm gonna do is try one of my old little tricks is take the toothpick and work it in there to try to open it up just a hair. And the reason for that is sometimes and also by moving the wick a little bit. Let me push it back down just a hair. Let's try one more time. It's starting to look a little bit better, a little bit hot on the top. I'm going to drop a couple drops of juice. What I'm, I'm very comfortable where the um, wires are positioned. I'm going to break these off. Okay. Drop a drop of juice on there. See what we got going on with juice. Maybe it'll look a little bit better. Sometimes it does look better once you get juice on it. And you can notice that there's really hot spots going on. The center looks a little too hot. Just move that just a hair. It still looks hot. All right. I'm going to stop this real quick so I can look at it better. Actually, I don't want to do that because I want to experience the issues on the camera so I can try to fix them. Okay. Let's see what we got here again. I'm going to push this one up just a hair. Just a hair. So we got right now. It's actually looking pretty good.
if you can see that. Top coil still doesn't look like it's getting as hot as the bottom. I think it's touching right there. Oh, now it looks better. Can you see that? Try one more drip of Joe's. I think we got it. I can mess around with it when I get some juice in it. Let me just show you how I fill it up. I'm going to take a bottle of juice with a syringe and just got some mojito. It is from Cherry Vapes, 18 milligrams. I'm going to see if it tells the percentage of the mixture. I'm going to throw some juice in here. And I don't have it filled right up to the top, but that's okay. I like leaving some air in there seems to wick a little bit better especially when it starts off and I've noticed some people leaving this screw out of the dead but I have no problems putting it back in okay put this on drip tip in. Okay, so there's the dead setup. Alrighty, so now I am going to vape it and see if we got all them shorts taken care of. See how she does. Okay folks, so there you have it. Setting it up and wicking and facing some troubleshooting on the dead. You know, the dead is one of the easier um, Genesis atomizers to set up. I have had issues with every Genesis atomizer. There's been days where I cannot get a coil to not have a hot spot. I've been popping coils and uh, wicks just doesn't... It, there's been those days. Um, the DID is usually, for the most part, been an easier Genesis atomizer um, to set up and get running. Right now, with that three wick or three wrap coil with the 32 gauge, I'm going to check in on the Provari, what the ohms are, and I am getting a 1.4, 1.4 ohms. I know that's the contrast with the uh, Provari screen. On my camera it just doesn't work well but it is a 1.4 and I am running it on my mechanical all mechanical mod the GG TB with a 17 670 um, AW protected battery the black ones there and it is a fresher battery around 4 volts at 1.4 so the wattage is up there on that one. Um, let's see how it vapes though. Tons of vapor. Beautiful wicking. Now, you know, I've heard of people on the and the forums saying, uh, I just don't wick, I'm getting muted flavor, um, I taste metallic. Every time I use stainless steel wicks, I've, I taste metal. Um, when you're tasting metal, for the most part, it's either you're shorting out in the bottom of the tank 
or you're shorting out in where the wraps are. Um, let's see how this one looks. I haven't even looked at this. I put it on here, started vaping on it. I don't even know if I'm even in any hot spots. Let's see if you can see anything. It looks pretty good. No hot spots. Looks pretty good. But sometimes it takes a little bit to get there. It's not as easy as it looks sometimes. Uh, I know the first time I wrapped the coil, it was perfect. The first time ever I wrapped the coil, it was perfect. The second time I wrapped the coil, it was not perfect. It took me over an hour to get it straightened out. But you, you learn as you go along what you're doing wrong, what you're doing right. Um, the whole secret behind wrapping it around the wick is getting a perfect amount of tension. You want to have it touching the wick, just touching. You do not want it cutting in or pushing into the stainless steel. You want it just touching all the way around, completely around. And when it goes over to the positive, you want it to be as close to the wick in the positive terminal with no space in there. Now, if there is a space in there and there's a straight piece, that piece will get hot. What I like to do is take a toothpick on that little straight pick piece and bend that piece in so it's either, so it's actually when, uh, let me just get a piece of wire, okay? There's a piece of wire, I know you can't see this, but you take the toothpick and just push in on it and bend it in between the positive, well, I can't do it, the positive and the wick. So you're going to get from the positive, it's going to go in like that. And it's going to touch more of the positive and more of the wick, so there's not going to be no not touching area. <laughs> But it works. A um, little trick I picked up, and it works very well. But the DIT has been a very good Genesis. Um, I like it with the clear tank. I really do. The stainless steel tank is very nice. It looks very sleek on the TB because it's the same uh, diameter as the TB. I love the way it looks on the TB. But that's what I have on the DIT, folks. I mean, they're very easily accessible. Um, I know... There is a Chinese version of the DID coming out, and I will probably end up picking that up too, but I don't think it's going to compare to the original DID. This is built with very good machining. Um, the quality of it is awesome, so if you're looking for a quality Genesis atomizer, the DID is really where to go. And it's easy accessible. The classifieds have them. You can go right to the vendor and get them most of the time. I've only seen one time where he was out of stock, but he was right back in stock in a couple weeks. But that's the vit did. I'm, this is a long video. Make sure you um, subscribe and comment on the video if you like it. And there is a contest that is ending tonight at midnight, 11.59 tonight, the 15th, um, for the VV tank. So get over to that video and do what you need to do to enter that contest. Do it and keep vaping everybody. Junkie Rock.